Okay, so we have a pretty phenomenal panel. There are people who are extremely successful as investors. We have people who are extremely successful as entrepreneurs. And my and the panel's goal is to essentially try and share our experiences as well as talk about what are some of the things that have worked and what are some of the things that have not worked. We are not necessarily going to be saying this is the right thing to do or this is not this is not the right thing to do because in the whole world of entrepreneurship and investments, there is there is nothing that's black and white. It's it's a lot of shades of gray. So having said that, uh, the way we're going to set the tone for the panel is um, for each one of the panelists to talk about some of the things that have worked. What is it that they really look for when they're looking at early stage investments, typically angel investments? Uh, how important is the team? How important is the concept? How important is the ability for you to analyze the markets and come up with the opportunities in the market? As well as you know, how important it is to, to sort of forge partnerships because entrepreneurship is a, is a lonely game, but you still have to bring in partners because that's the only way for you to actually make this successful. And, and this goes across the board. I mean, you look at you know, snap deals or flip cards of the world, they've all partially been successful because they also have amazing teams and great partnerships. So with that, I'm going to sort of hand this over to Shailesh to get started. Thanks, Vinod. Uh, so I'm uh, Shailesh from Seed Fund. We are a very early stage venture fund. Uh, we have two funds under our management. You might have heard of company like Red Bus, uh, quite familiar name, uh, Vatsalya, My Dentist, Carwale, uh, V Resorts, all of our companies, they are all of our portfolio companies. We are the largest shareholder of all of these companies. So as an investor, what we worry about and what we look about, so I think there's a cliche that we all basically worry about the team, the quality of the team, the kind of people who are trying to do it. And we also look kind of the quality which we worry about uh, is more than anything is their, their ability to hustle, their ability to break. So what I call is how they can bend their spoon, right? Uh, with the least possible capital, how do they how do they redefine every word of the marketing? To give an example, like in e-commerce business, uh, majority of the company which you know do a transaction in the range of two to three percent conversion rate, which means that out of hundred visitors who come to your site, around two people do a transaction. In a red bus, that number was somewhere around 19 percent, much you know, ten times higher than anywhere else. So these are things we worry about. In any company, we see how. Th what are the things they are doing which are changing the rule, which are changing the game? And that's what we look for in any other companies. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Ajay Ramasubramaniam. I run Zone Startups India. Uh, we are an accelerator. So we work with early stage startups who have gone beyond uh, the validation of their idea. So not someone who had a great business plan or who has a thought in their mind, but where they have kind of done some level of execution where they have gone out to their customer base, which could either be a business to business, like a B2B business, or a B2C kind of business. So what we look for is, uh, one, the, the idea or the, the business that they come, come to us with has been validation. So they need to have some very, very early stage users. It, it could be as less as for two to three business users, or probably if it's a B2C product, probably have a, a few hundred or a few thousand users. But beyond that, uh, what we look for mainly is uh, the scalability. So typically, we would not uh, look at company or uh, a business where it is easy for every Tom, Dick, and Harry to, to replicate it. Uh, so we would look at some kind of uh, innovation or some kind of barriers to entry, uh, which is very important. Uh, because uh, apart from the accelerator, we also have recently set up a fund, which will make some investments. So we would want to look at uh, companies where it's not possible for anyone to replicate. Uh, they are globally scalable. So we would not look at businesses or verticals which are very specific to a region or a city or just India. Uh, we are headquartered in Toronto as a part of a university. Uh, we have set up uh, operations in India about uh, 20 months back. And since then, we have also launched operations in uh, South Africa. And over the next couple of years, we are looking at expanding in uh, four more countries. So we are looking at companies or looking at businesses which have a kind of a global scalability to it. But at the same time, they are very uh, innovative or unique in their approach. Uh, I'm Ari Kumar from Alal Bahadur Shastri Institute of Management. And earlier I was the Bits Pilani. And I'm just sharing the uh, other side of the coin, not as an investor and a fundraising, but uh, how to nurture a student community, a young minds, to become a great entrepreneurs. So we started our incubator in 2002-3. And uh, initially we found that the students used to have hesitation that they don't have money, and that was a great myth in their mind. 
And soon we realized that in one or two years that more than a money, what is required is an ecosystem on a campus which can germinate good innovative ideas, which are technology driven, which are the one which have got a great scope for scalability, and which can change the way the world is operating. And it took us another two to three years to tell you the truth. Although we had a line of fundings, we had a seed funding lines from a DST, Tide, TDB. We had our own uh, alumni from a Silicon Valley who was supporting our students in terms of funding. But we found initially we were not able to give them money. And there was a dearth of really uh, worthwhile, scalable ideas. And it took me along with my alumni team from Silicon Valley to, enter, to introduce certain uh, courses which we were running offline, I'll say not offline, online, in a late night from a Bay Area and we were delivering in all the four campuses. Our friend has recently mentioned about Red Bus and a car volley. Red Bus was a seed which was germinated in a Bits Pilani campus from 2008 to, uh, till 2008. And thereafter, he basically took off after leaving his job from IBM. So, my own personal experience suggests me that today what is required is uh, innovative ideas which can change the world. And it is more of a, as our friend has recently said that, these ideas could be uh, innovation in a product development, they could be in a, uh, my speed with which I am delivering a value, this could be a market development, they could be a process development. In all these areas, the technology plays a big role. Let me just share with you, uh, two days back, you must have come across a news item on the Times of India, at the front page. It says uh, a court in a state has given an order for $862 million to be given as a damages to two of the Bitsians, whose technology for 1998 was used by Apple. And I think uh, this is where I really say a business differs from an entrepreneurship. Today, my university system, along with the industry, along with the uh, funding bodies, have to create an ecosystem whereby my success rate improves. Indian economy is uh, on a verge of a big takeoff. Every day today we find uh, not less than two to three ventures are coming up, not less than 60 deals are taking place. To my students, I've been always advising, initially don't go in for borrowing money from a venture capitalist or angel capital. You put a bootstrap financing, as much money as you can put in from your own sources or friends or relatives. But be sure of one thing, it's not a profit which is important in a business. What is important is that you should never be cash out. And in the first phase of your growth, which we really say is a, a death trap or a death valley, if I can sustain by developing a product wherein there is a down payment by the customer because he realizes the value, so my three of my incubators I found, we connected them with the customers in terms of developing a technology, and my customer was funding them. So my simple uh, uh, thing which I would focus is, there's a great opportunity in India, one should come out with the great ideas, or good ideas, funding would never come on the way, funding would never come on the way, and for a good and a right idea, there's a funding which is chasing them. So with that, I'll stop away. Thank you. Hello. Hi, I'm Pranay Gupta. I'm the founder of 91 Spring Board. We are a co-working hub. Uh, we think of ourselves as a community-led incubator. So what I mean, these are big spaces, variety of people sitting there, startups, tech service providers, designers, freelancers, uh, offshoots of smaller companies, offshoots of well-funded companies. And our job is to bind them together as a community. And they help each other and they grow. Everyone grows. So that's what we do. We are the biggest incubator in India, if you think of it. Uh, we have five centers, uh, Delhi in Okla, Gurgaon, Noida, Hyderabad, Navi Mumbai. We are setting one up in Bangalore. And uh, fundamentally, I've been involved a lot in helping tech-based startups in my previous role. And in, as 91 Springboard, we've helped about 40 plus startup raise a variety of funding, mostly focusing on the angel level and seed level of funding. Thank you. So, uh, excuse me. so I think you have a sort of a fairly good mix of um, experts who can answer a lot of the questions and also be able to articulate the options that are available. Uh, I'm going to go back to Shailesh because Shailesh talked about team. Now, it's a chicken and egg situation, Shailesh. I mean, you have early stage enterprises, you know, they don't necessarily have the money, nor the resources. 
and it's really hard to have a passionate team. There's usually a one-man show who's doing this. Um, how do you sort of really address that particular issue? Because you know that's a very frequent issue in startups. Um, yeah. So <clears throat> I think this question we come across all the time, where people are struggling to get uh, team members. They say, okay, I can't hire this tech guy. He has EMIs to pay, he has a loan to pay, and he is willing to join whenever you, the funding is there. Uh, our reasoning and my reasoning is that, uh, that as an entrepreneur, you have to sell your idea and your company to a multiple level. So it's not that the, you are just uh, uh, coming to VCs and selling your idea and raising the money. You also need to go and convince the guy to come and join you, right? So like in a war, right? You cannot win a war with mercenaries. You cannot uh, win a war with the hired guns, right? Same way you have to motivate people to uh, join the greater goods. So until, unless you are able to do that, the probability of you able to maintain a team is not there. Because what will happen, even if you pay very great salary, somebody else will pay great salary to that guy and he'll quit, right? So if you say that the money is the reason for not able to build a company, I think that's the, that's the, that's the worst possible excuse you can give. So we see the ability of the entrepreneur to hustle and create a scenario where without getting any money, he can convince some people to go, go and work with him, moonlight with him, do something mm -hmm. at all, but demonstrate those abilities, right? Because money is not a solution. There's never enough money. There's never enough money. So uh, Ajay, I'll ask you the same question too, because you know, as, a, as an incubator, accelerator, uh, and, and an early stage fund, you have the similar issue and, and, and one of the advantages of working in an accelerator or an incubator is the ability for you to be able to leverage resources across multiple companies and the ability for you to actually go ahead and get advice from a bunch of people who are also in similar situations in early stage companies. Uh, how much of this collaborative effort happens within Zone or how do you see that happening within the entrepreneurial ecosystem? I mean, are there people who are sort of very actively collaborating or, or is this just a sort of a, a, a dream that most people talk about but doesn't necessarily happen? Sure. So uh, I'll just allude to, to two points. Uh, one which even uh, Pranay made in his uh, uh, introduction is that uh, co-working spaces which are multidisciplinary and are not restricted to batches or cohorts of five startups or ten startups, the advantage is that there are, there are different kinds of startups doing, doing different, kind, different kind of stuff but everyone has different skill sets. Uh, in these kind of multidisciplinary, collaborative, co-working spaces, the, the biggest advantage that you have is that one, uh, there is a lot of programming which happens, like there is a lot of uh, focus on peer-to-peer -peer learning. So there might be two different startups doing two different kind of businesses, but focusing on the same segment which might be either a B2C kind of a business or a B2B kind of a business or within a particular vertical. Uh, there is a lot of learning that can happen between two people or two different teams and that is where we see the, the collaborative spirit or uh, the benefits or advantages of being in a kind of a, a co-working space which has different kind of entrepreneurs. At the same time, if uh, a business goes bust or someone decides to close shop, there is a, a good amount of talent which comes out of these businesses. I mean, this happens everywhere. Uh, when you're working within a co-working space, there is always a kind of a rapport that you uh, establish between your peers. So even if a company closes down, uh, even if you are a, a kind of a co-founder or a founder of a company and you decide that, okay, my business is not taking off, I'm not going anywhere, and it's better that I, I fail or I shut down this business, uh, the business might fail, but the guy uh, or the girl uh, may not by themselves be failures. I mean, they could be a, a qualified human capital which someone else could absorb within that kind of a co-working space. Uh, going to the question which even uh, Vinod asked uh, to Shailesh is that uh, if a team is not, if you're not, if you have a great idea and you think that it is something which is sustainable, which you're able to grow, but if you're not able to build a team, I guess that also is a, is a big failure. Uh, in, in our case, when we work with uh, early stage companies, and I'm, I'm talking of this from uh, boot camps and workshops that we run in Canada, is that in a year's time, if you're not able to build a team of six people, that means your business is going nowhere. You can't do everything by yourself. Uh, you can't be the coder, you can't be the marketeer, you can't be the, the guy behind the business. You need to have people uh, to whom you can delegate and people from whom you can get work done. So building a team is, uh, is of paramount uh, importance. Uh, Professor Arya, this is a question uh, that sort of comes to my mind uh, and this is something that's fairly frequently asked, right? I mean, the difference between going to a zone startups or a 91 spring board versus going to one that's run by an educational institution because the educational institutions tend to typically have a social agenda as well, which sometimes sort of conflicts with the commercial agenda. 
So, uh, you know, I, I know you may, you may you get, you know, excellent ideas. How do you sort of realize or how do you sort of say that this is one that I really want to go ahead and do and this one will not necessarily take off A because of this whole social agenda and I'll need to probably look for something else and say you need to go to a zone or to a 91 rather than coming to me. Uh, I would say educational institutions which have developed the entrepreneurship in a total integrated way. What I mean by that is research which is driven towards application. So professors are involved and they take an equity stake also. Students who are highly charged in terms of uh, coming up with new ideas. My alumni who are already entrepreneurs that get connected with the institutions. And we get great collaboration with the industry. If that kind of a composition I can develop, then my social agenda versus commercial agenda would never come in the way. And my educational institution would have a greater edge because of the lot of potential into the research part of it. And I would add there, at the appropriate time, an incubator from an educational institution has to go out and park himself in the accelerator, where he'll have a still bigger opportunities. So but there's nothing a conflict of interest. My first stage of a growth can be there in a good incubator. Second stage of a growth could be in an accelerator. Third stage of a growth could be he is going in a scalable way and goes out of the market itself in a big way. So all the three stages are complementary to each other. And today, the greatest challenge which good technological institutions have in India is to build up the ecosystem which is integrated in totality and bring all these stakeholders getting connected to the institutions. That is the great challenge. So I found, in our case, it worked very well because of the support which we gave, got from a Silicon Valley in terms of our own alumni. In turn, their own connection and networking with the industrialists. And our institution already had around 300 to 400 collaboration with the industry where our students were around the year been parked. So these were the features which added a great strength for us to germinate the seeds quickly of entrepreneurship on a bit spelling campus, which I am now trying to do at the Lal Bahadur Shastri Institute of Management. Thank you.